Hi there. Hi, this is 7 at 7 Hope City, and it is so good to be with you tonight and whenever you can join us. My name is Dana, and I have some good encouraging news for you tonight, seven minutes of encouragement. And this past Sunday, we had a guest speaker in. It was Pastor Gary Otten, and if you haven't heard the message that he brought, I encourage you to go to um, HopeCityEVV.com and go and listen to this past Sunday's message. It will encourage you, even if you don't go to this certain uh, body of believers, this local church, wherever you go, or even if you don't go, this will be an encouraging word for you. It was very uplifting. Um, it helped center. I think sometimes we can get off center. We can get off base, and it helps center us, and I know it just really lifted me up and brought me back on point on a couple of things. So I wanna share with you a little bit about what stood out to me that Pastor Gary uh, talked about. So he was actually talking to our congregation in one uh, part where he began. And in particular, um, this was to, this is really to our church, Hope City, but this word that he gave that God was showing will be for any believer. So if you're a believer in Christ, this is for you for sure. And he took it from Luke chapter 9. Uh, this is verse 16 through 18 that I'll be sharing with you. But just to give you a little backdrop here, um, background, Jesus is uh, preaching and teaching to about 5,000 people and children added to that and and women added to that. And they said about 5,000 people. So from morning to evening Jesus is preaching and the people are staying with him and it's getting to be the end of the day and the disciples notice these they say to Jesus you know he these people haven't had anything to eat nothing to drink um, we should send them home and Jesus says why should we send them home you feed them and the disciples go well what are we going to feed them with there's nothing around here there's nothing that they can get food here and then this little boy comes up with five loaves of bread his lunch five loaves of bread and two fish and so Jesus says, all right. And really what he's saying is, okay, watch me. I'm going to do this and I'm going to teach you how to do this. So Jesus, he takes the fish, he takes the bread, he lifts it up to heaven and he gives thanks for it. He thanks the father for this meal. And then he starts breaking the bread and he starts breaking apart, tearing apart the fish. And when he does, he just keeps breaking it and he hands it to the 12 disciples. So each of them has something to go and to pass out. So I'll just read this to you out of Luke 9, 16 through 18. Taking the five loaves and fish and looking up into heaven, Jesus gives thanks and breaks them. And then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. And they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And Pastor Gary said, just like Jesus took the fish and took the loaves of bread and he broke them, God says that he is breaking the limitations off of your life. He's breaking because when Jesus broke that bread, then it was no longer limited to just five loaves and two fish. Those five loaves and two fish began to multiply and it broke the limitations off of what was provided by God so that everyone could eat and everyone's need could be met. So Jesus is really saying, I believe to not only us at Hope City, but to you, whoever is watching when you watch, that Jesus is breaking limitations off of your life. If you'll but come to him and thank him for being involved in your life and for the plan he has for your life, he's breaking limitations off. You know, limitations can be in our mind, our thoughts. Limitations can be in our ability. Limitations, there can be limitations in our job. Maybe we're not going as far as we want to, or it looks like there's a ceiling and we can't go very far. They're not offering us much in our job. 
So God wants to supply resources for you to accomplish what he's put you in the earth to do. And that means in every area of your life, in your family life, in your marriage, in training and raising your children, in your life, that the place, the part that you are in your church family. He wants to break off any limitations that would keep you from doing all that you were created to do to help the local body bring the gospel to people in whatever city you're you're in whatever state you're in so movement if these limitations are broken off then we have movement we have movement so that our faith can be in action so I just want to ask you what is in your life what could be keeping God's will or his promises from taking place in your life that's what I've been asking myself what in my life what is stopping or keeping what God wants to do in my life from taking place? What are the limitations that are keeping these promises from coming to pass, from manifesting? So remember, we've been given power and authority to change our situation and to fulfill any vacant places that we have need of. And you might say, well, how can we do that? How can we do that, Dana? Well, from your endued with power position in Christ Jesus. That's how you do it. So it started when it was given to us, power was given to us on the day of Pentecost. And I'm going to read that real quickly to you. Wow, my time is already almost over. <laughs> I'm going to read that quickly to you and just share this with you real quickly. That Acts 1-4 says, Jesus commanded the apostles and he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, in verse 5, he said, John baptized with water, but not many days from now, you will, shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit comes up on you. And you shall be my witnesses in Judea, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and all of the ends of the earth. So Pastor Gary was sharing with us, said, don't deal with your issues, with decisions, and with stresses in your life until you have been endued with power. Don't forget, it's time to go and pray in the heavenly language that the Holy Spirit has given you as a gift to help you pray for what you don't know how to pray, to help you pray for things that you don't know the end from the beginning like God does. And so he's giving you this gift, the Holy Spirit, who gives you power and ability to pray for things that you don't know what the outcome is, or you don't know how to obtain certain things, resources, and certain, or make certain connections with people unless you pray it out with the help of the Holy Spirit. He'll give you the words to pray. And even though your mind is limited and doesn't understand what you're praying, the Holy Spirit praying through you, using your tongue and using your voice and using your body, your mind, your, your being, your heart, he prays through you the will of God for what you need. And as you continue to pray and get endued with power, then his ability comes to you and he helps you find the answers to what you need and what you're asking for to make decisions, to make choices, to make decisions for your family, with your job situation, or to deal with a matter that's hard, that it's difficult, that it's stressful, and it includes several people or responsibilities. God is saying, and as Pastor Gary was saying, don't do it alone. You have help. Don't do it alone. You have help. So you want to pray with the heavenly language, the gift that Jesus has given to every believer and pray. And you know, Jesus said in John 16, 7, he said, I tell you the truth when I say it's profitable, it's good and advantageous for you that I go away. So that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Advocate, the Standby, and the Strengthener will come and dwell with you and abide with you forever. He will be with you closely. So God wants, the, he, he wants to participate and help us in life. So this way, we don't have to do life alone. Since we've been given the gift and help of the power and ability of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to do life alone. So take time and pray in the Holy Spirit, and then he'll put his super on your natural, and he'll take the limit off of your understanding, and he'll take the limits off of things that have been limited in your life, and he will help you fulfill his will 
and fulfill his promises that he's promised to you. I pray this has been encouraging and helpful to you tonight. God bless you and encourage someone else with these words if you would like to share it. Hope to see you soon this Sunday, 10 a.m. at Hope City.